As we executed the expedition this year, we noticed we were going from the Mediterranean to the Indian Ocean. The idea was here at the north part of the Red Sea to board the ship and then go down the spine of the Red Sea and do some very unique diving that very few people get to do, especially with a deep diving submersible. Overseeing our science mission on uh, this year's expedition is Dr. Alan Jameson of Newcastle University. So there's two major scientific components to this. One is based on the landers that we're using and the other one is based on the sub. We have three landers. Um, to prep them, we normally bait uh, on a high definition video camera that lies close to the sea floor and that collects data of uh, live animals in their natural habitat. We have small invertebrate traps which collect very small animals we use for genetic studies. It also collects 10 litres of bottom water samples and we can use that for a variety of things. So the landers are launched over the starboard side of the vessel. So when we put it in the water, we let it go and it just free falls to the seafloor, crash lands. Everything is pre-programmed, everything works completely autonomously on its own. Eventually we'll, we'll pick up the lander on the sea surface, bring it back on board and then we start downloading the video to have a look at what we've got and to assess the success of that dive and then how to play the next day. Uh, the secondary component of the science involves the submersible. In the northern part of the Red Sea was our first target, the Kerbit Deep. And that was really exciting because it would be our first exposure to the very unique feature of the Red Sea, which are these brine lakes at the bottom of the Red Sea. Here we are, this is the Red Sea dive to the Kerbit Deep. I'm here with Dr. Alan Jameson. This is Victor Discovery, your pilot. We think we're gonna go down to about 1,530 meters to the brine pool. Yeah, we're in it. We're in it. See how look how yeah, 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 that was yeah. it. That was the brine I think pool. we just bounced off of we it. We just bounced off of it. Look at that. Do you see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How it like looks like a wave coming in. Yep. What a brine pool is is an area of extremely salty water. So it's so salty it doesn't mix with the seawater. So it actually looks like an underwater lake. You see it shimmering there. Yeah. This is we just dipped in the brine pool. Who's done that? <laughs> As a scientist, the opportunity to join an organization or an outfit like this with the submarine and the landers and the multi-beam in the ship and be able to take it around the world, and you know, it's just unbelievable. It's, it's not an opportunity that comes very often, uh, and hopefully we are definitely going to make the most of it. challenging thing about deep water diving, believe it or not, is actually getting the permits to dive in the exclusive economic zone of these countries. And without the cooperation of King Abdullah University of Science and Technology, I don't think it would have happened. I was fortunate enough to meet uh, Justin Mayer in the United States, who's one of the executive directors of the university. We were able to coordinate offline and get the cooperation of the Saudi authorities to issue us a permit to dive in the Red Sea. As part of the whole process, of course, Cooperating with KAUST, I was uh, provided the opportunity to present to well over a hundred science members, faculty, and members of the Saudi military about the five deeps, but also what we're doing here in the Red Sea. And I was very impressed by the uh, King Abdullah University, the level of resources they have in terms of one of the world's fastest supercomputers, exotic and capable electron microscopes and magnetic imaging systems. It was just extraordinary, really eye-opening just to see how much capability that they had. So we're uh, near the Suakin Deep in the southern part of the Red Sea and today the team is dropping myself and my scientific observer into the crater of a volcano underwater. So that's kind of a Thursday for us here. So we're going to go down and take a look at the geology and some of the unique characteristics of this area. Probably about a five hour dive. This is the uh, dive to the Suakin Deep. The first one we're headed into a dormant volcano. There it is. Yeah. Those are rocks. I think we're on the top now. Um, yeah. 1900 meters, it looks very smooth. And so our objective is to do at least two dives there to collect more science information, but also to take down, hopefully, a uh, Saudi national to be the first person, along with myself, to the bottom of the Red Sea. And there it is. 
Congratulations. We're the first people to the bottom of the Red Sea. Amazing. Now when you see it on the map, you can go, I've actually been to the bottom of that. <laughs> it's pretty fun. We made the first manned submersible dive to the bottom of the Suakin Trough, which is the deepest point in the Red Sea. It was such an honor to work with KAUST and the Saudi Arabian government to actually do so much science and so much diving in the Red Sea. It's just great to bring these opportunities to other people and explore places where no human being has actually personally laid eyes on them. It's a great feeling.